Alright guys, so in this build video we are going to be showing you a step-by-step -step process of our largest configuration of the Workbee, which is 39.5 inches by 59 inches or 1000 millimeters by 1500 millimeters. As you can see this thing is huge. It's a solid configuration as well with our second modification for our spoiler board which increases accuracy and less deflection and that depth is going to be at a little over three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters so that is plenty to uh, do some solid design work and we're also going to have an X travel at 31 and a half inches or 800 millimeters which is extremely large we also have our Y travel at 50 inches or 1270 millimeters so this machine is solid it's huge you can do all kinds of design work on this guys super excited to get started on it with you so let's go ahead and move on to our step-by-step -step process okay guys so on this first step we are going to start with our wheel assemblies starting with our smaller wheel we have our mini v delrin shell we also have two of our mini v bearings two of our mini v precision shims now to assemble this wheel simply grab the shell here you're gonna pop in your bearing grab one of your precision shims place it in the middle of the wheel and lock it into place with your other mini bearing. Alright, this mini V precision shim here can be left out. Alright guys, now that we have that assembled we are going to do the additional three other wheels and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step we're going to go ahead and assemble our extreme wheels. So we have here is a solid extreme wheel shell and this is made out of polycarbonate, so it's very important to use a silicone-based lubricant. Do not use any type of other oils because it will penetrate the polycarbonate and cause this wheel to crack. So definitely something to keep in mind. And also, we'll have two open builds bearings here and one precision shim for the assembly. And one thing that I'll say is uh, these open builds bearings uh, come greased. So what I do is I take a paper towel here and just wipe off any of that additional grease. That way the oil doesn't penetrate the wheel. It's just a good idea just to go ahead and wipe down those bearings. So I'm going to do that for both of these bearings. And then from there you simply take the wheel shell, pop in one of the bearings, just like so. Make sure that it is fully inserted. Then add your precision shim in the middle. It's very important. And then add your additional bearing. And that is the assembly for the extreme wheel. So let's go ahead and assemble our additional 47 wheels and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step we are going to be assembling our belt idler wheels to our y-axis plate. So what we need to gather is our y-axis plate, two M5 27 millimeter screws, two M5 20 millimeter screws, two 6 millimeter aluminum spacers, four mini V precision shims, two black nylon hex nuts, and our already assembled mini Delrin V-wheels. So to get started, first let's take notice to our holes here on the front of the plate. So our belt idler wheels are going to reside in these two holes here. So let's go ahead and take our 27 millimeter screws and insert those into these two holes. Now from the back end of the plate, we're going to go ahead and insert our 20 millimeter screws. Now placing the plate on its side, the reason for inserting the 20 millimeter screws is because if we did this at a later time, the screws would not fit once the wheels were attached to the 27 millimeter screws. So from here we're going to go ahead and take our 6 millimeter aluminum spacers and insert those on both screws and then add two precision shims on each screw. And the purpose of this is for proper spacing so the idler wheels will reside on the track versus being pushed back or too far out. So you need those two shims on each one of the aluminum spacers. So the same on this additional screw here. And then add the mini Delrin V wheels here. And what I like to do is cap it off with a nylon hex nut. Let's go ahead and place that on top.
And let's go ahead and tighten this system down. All right, so once you have the wheels tightened down here, make sure that they're still rolling smoothly. You don't want to over tighten this because you will get binding motions in the wheels. So that actually looks really good. So great job so far. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, we are going to be mounting our NEMA 23 to our Y axis plate and also our GT3 20 tooth timing pulley. We're going to need our Y axis plate that we started on with our bell idlers, a NEMA 23 motor, got two of our 20 millimeter screws, four of our 3 millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our black nylon hex nuts, of course, our timing pulley, spanner wrench, and our ball driver set, which you can purchase at Open Builds on our store. This is very handy. I do love this set personally. I would recommend and purchasing it. So to start this off, we're going to go ahead and put this plate to the side. I'm going to insert two more of our 20 millimeter screws on these top two holes here. We're going to go ahead and insert our three millimeter aluminum spacers. All right, and from there, I'm going to go ahead and grab my NEMA 23 motor here. I'm going to go ahead and take my black nylon hex nuts here and start to thread them on top of the screw. All right, so we've got our motor attached here. It's looking great. Three millimeter aluminum spacers are in place and our idler wheels, wheels on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and attach our, our GT3 22 timing pulley. Now, when we do this process, we want to align this pulley to our idler wheels. And once again, we're going to find our flat shaft on our motor and that is going to be mounted with one of our set screws. All right, that's nice and locked and secure. As you can see, we have it aligned with our wheels here, and that's perfect, guys. Moving right along. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, guys, moving on to the next step here. On this step, we are going to be assembling our wheels to our Y-axis plate, which we are going to stack with our Y-axis inner plate here. We're going to need one of our Y-axis inner plates, our partially assembled Y-axis left plate, our motor attached, and we're going to need 14 of our already assembled extreme wheels, 7 of our 60 millimeter screws, 7 of our 9 millimeter aluminum spacers, 8 of our 6 millimeter aluminum spacers, 6 of our centric spacers, 7 of our black nylon hex nuts, also going to need 14 of our precision shims, spanner wrench, our M5 screwdriver, and some painter's tape. All right, so to get started here, guys, we are going to check out our hole spacing here. Now, the full four holes above the motor here, these are going to be for our fixed wheels, which will be the aluminum spacer uh, configuration. We're also going to have larger holes here on the bottom with three. Those are going to be for our centric spacer, so we can adjust our wheels to add preload. So let's go ahead and feed our screws through. All right, so now I'm going to just go ahead and tilt this plate to the side here. I'm going to grab some of my painter's tape. Now, this isn't necessarily uh, necessary for this step. It makes it a whole lot easier. And I'm just going to show you guys a little, little tip that uh, helps me out. And just go ahead and set it on top of your screw heads here to keep them in place. Alright, now that we got our screws in place with our painter's tape, 
You know, I'd flip it to the other side here on top of our motor, and we are going to start our wheel assembly configuration, starting with the bottom here. So we're going to go ahead and grab our 6mm spacers here. If you haven't already done so, we'll put a little mark on our 6mm insignia. That way we know how to adjust these eccentrics to add preload. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and face this away from our fixed wheels, which is the top portion here. So, it will be facing us, the, the marked portion of the 6mm eccentric spacer. We're going to do the same thing for the next two screws. Alright, now that we got our 6mm spacers in place, we are going to start with uh, precision shims on all three of our screws. Alright, then after that we are going to add our wheel. On top of that, our 9mm aluminum spacer. An additional wheel. Alright, and on top of the wheels we're going to add our precision shim and then an additional eccentric spacer. Alright, perfect. So that's our eccentric side. Move up to our top fixed wheel side. So we're going to start off with our 6mm aluminum spacer on all four screws. Precision shims after. And then our extreme wheels. Now if you have any issues with your precision shim in the middle of your wheel here, uh, lining up with the screw, you can adjust it with your ball driver here. It'll simply click into place. Either that or you can actually spin it on the screw and it'll find the center of gravity. So it's pretty simple. Alright, so after our wheel we're going to go ahead and add our 9mm aluminum spacer. Alright, so additional wheel on top of the 9mm aluminum spacer. Alright. After that, we're going to go ahead and add our precision shims. All right, then following that, we're going to go ahead and add our 6mm aluminum spacer on top. All right, now this will complete our configuration before we stack onto our inner Y plate here. So let's go ahead and grab our inner Y plate, making sure that it is upright with the open build insignia on the bottom here. We're going to go ahead and stack that in to our Y axis plate here, make sure everything aligns. All right, I'm going to go ahead and thread in our nylon hex nuts here. All right, now that we got this fastened in place, go ahead and make sure that there's none that are loose. I'm going to go ahead and tilt this on its side and remove your painter's tape. All right, so we're going to use our ball driver here and our spanner wrench, and we're going to go ahead and tighten these down. Okay guys, now that we've got our wheels fastened down, as you can see this is looking really sharp, we're going to go ahead and mirror the same process on our right side, so our right Y axis plates, we're going to do the same exact steps. So go ahead and get that one done guys, and we'll move on to our next step. So on this next step, we're going to go ahead and assemble our belt idler wheels to our additional Y axis plate. So it's going to be the same process we did with our additional plate. So simply locate the holes here where the 27 millimeter screws will reside. And let's go ahead and insert those now and complete this assembly process. And once again, make sure to insert those 20 millimeter screws. Because you won't be able to get them in once you have the wheels attached to these 27 millimeter screws. Alright, once you have those wheels tightened down, just make sure that they're not over tightened. You still have free movement here and the wheels, and that looks really good. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. 
All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our NEMA 23 to our Y axis plate here. So like our other plate, we are gonna do the same exact assembly process. So we're gonna need two of our 20 millimeter screws, four of our black nylon hex nuts, four of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, our GT322 timing pulley, our ball driver set, spanner wrench, and our NEMA 23 motor. So let's go ahead and get started here, guys. All right, so that looks great, guys. We have it assembled. Let's go ahead and put this piece to the side, and we'll move on to our next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our wheels to our Y-axis plate. So just like our other process, we are going to be needing 14 of our already assembled extreme wheels, 7 of our 60 millimeter screws, 7 of our 9 millimeter aluminum spacers, 8 of our 6 millimeter aluminum spacers, 6 of our eccentric spacers, 14 of our precision shims, 7 of our black nylon hex nuts. In addition to that, we're going to need our M5 ball driver, spanner wrench, and painter's tape. And just like the start of our other process, guys, we're going to go ahead and mark all of our eccentrics. As you can see, I have mine pre-marked. So go ahead and start with that first, and let's go ahead and finish this assembly. All right, that looks great, guys. So we have this assembly finished. We're gonna go ahead and put this off to the side and we'll move on to our next step. Okay, guys, moving on to the next step here. After we have assembled our two Y-axis plates here, this should be a mirror image, we shall be moving on to our X-carriage assembly, which is going to include our X-carriage plate here. We are also gonna need six of our extreme assembled wheels, six of our screws, three of our centric spacers, three of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, Spacers, six precision shims, six of our black nylon hex nuts, spanner wrench, M5 screwdriver, and our permanent marker. So starting off with this guys, we're going to go ahead and mark off our centrics. All right, so we're gonna move on to our X carriage plate here. As you can see, we have recessed holes. We have three larger holes and three smaller holes here. The three larger holes we're gonna use for our centric spacers. That's for the movement and the rotation of adding preload to our axis. So let's go ahead and start with placing three of our 30 millimeter screws in the eccentric side here. All right, we're gonna follow suit with the opposite end. All right, and then just gently flip this over here. All right, so starting off, we're gonna go ahead and put our centrics on. Our centrics should be facing away from our fixed wheels. So fixed wheels here, the black side that we marked here on our centric should be facing away from that. Let's go ahead and put the centrics on. All right, then we're gonna follow suit with our precision shims on top. And then following the precision shim, we're gonna go ahead and put on our wheel. All right, so on the opposite side for our fixed wheels, we're going to start off with our 6 millimeter aluminum spacers, followed by our precision shim. 
and our assembled wheels. And now our black nylon hex nuts, we're going to go ahead and thread in place here. Alright, beautiful. So now that we have those in place, we're going to go ahead and tilt this to the side, grab our spanner wrench and our ball driver, and we're going to go ahead and fasten these down. All right, so we have our wheels tightened down now. We're going to go ahead and adjust our centrics to show our marked end facing outward. All right, perfect. So now that we have our X carat wheel assembly attached, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step, guys. Okay, moving on to the next step, guys. On the step, we're going to go ahead and assemble our anti-backlash nut block to our X carriage assembly. So we're going to need our X carriage assembly. We're going to need two of our 25 millimeter screws, two of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our precision shims, two of our nylon hex nuts, and our anti-backlash nut block here. So the first thing we're going to notice is anti-backlash nut block here has a hex design on one side and a circular design on the other with recessed holes for our screws. The other side is going to be for our nylon hex nuts so make sure that you align it properly so on the back end of our X carriage assembly we are going to mount our anti-backlash nut block so starting off we're going to go ahead and grab two of our 25 millimeter screws feed them through the plate here we're going to flip it around to the other side keeping our screws secure like so we're going to go ahead and add our three millimeter aluminum spacers followed by our precision shims so we're going to go ahead and add our anti-backlash nut block here and thread our nylon hex nuts on top. Alright, go ahead and tilt this to the side here. And generally I'll pull the anti-backlash nut block forward. As you can see, my hex nuts are within the actual nut block and this is so we can tighten it down properly. All right, make sure it's nice and tight here, and also make sure that the nut block is straight and in place. So that looks great, guys. We're going to go ahead and put that to the side and move on to our next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We're going to be assembling our stepper motor pulley system to our X plate. So we're going to need our X plate here, our NEMA 23 stepper motor, our GT3 timing pulley, four of our black nylon hex nuts, four of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, and four of our 20 millimeter screws. We're going to need our ball driver and spanner wrench. All right. So to get started here guys, we're going to locate the holes for our motor. We have two down here below the center shaft and two above it. So notice that we have the open build insignia here on the front. We are going to want that facing outward. So we're going to insert our screws on the back side of this plate here. We're going to grab our three millimeter aluminum spacers. Go ahead and put them into place. We're going to go ahead and push our motor into place here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab two of our black nylon hex nuts and we're going to start to thread on our 20 millimeter screws here. All right, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and grab our spanner wrench and tighten these screws down here. All right, so we got the top two tightened down. We're going to do the same thing with uh, the bottom two screws here. I'm going to go ahead and add our black nylon hex nuts onto the end here. Now we're going to go ahead and grab our spanner wrench and tighten these down. All right, it's looking great, guys. We've got our, our motor mounted. We are going to move the shaft to the flat side. Going to take our GT3 timing pulley, tighten that down. All right, then we're going to tighten down the side set screw here onto the motor shaft. All right, so now we have our timing pulley in place, our motor mounted to our X plate here. It's looking great, guys. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. So this step, we are going to be assembling our wheels with our X back plate as well as our X front plate. We are going to need our X back plate assembly with our motor, our X plate front assembly here, and our precision shims 
a count of 14. We're also going to need eight of our six millimeter aluminum spacers. Going to need six of our eccentric spacers. Also going to need seven of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, seven of our black nylon hex nuts, 14 assembled wheels, and seven of our 60 millimeter screws. We're also going to need our additional pools, our M5 ball driver and set, our spanner driver, our spanner wrench, our permanent marker, and let's go ahead and get started here guys. So to start off we're going to go ahead and mark our eccentric spacers. Alright, perfect. So to continue on, we're going to go ahead and grab our X back plate assembly here and notice how our assembly is going together. So this front plate here has the recessed holes on this side with the open builds insignia etched on the bottom here. So this is going to be facing the outside within the wheel assembly, just like so. Alright, so to go ahead and get started here, we're going to go ahead and feed our 60 millimeter screws through our X front plate. All right, so now that we got our 60 millimeter screws fed through, we're gonna go ahead and flip it over. And we are going to start our stacking process for our double extreme wheel configuration, starting with our eccentric spacers here. Now we're gonna add our precision shims. And we're gonna add our assembled wheels on top of the precision shim. And then our 9mm aluminum spacer on top of our assembled wheels. And then our additional wheel on top. Followed by precision shims. And our centric spacer with our bottom lip here facing upward. Alright, now we have our centric side finished. We're going to go ahead and work on our top side here. Starting with our 6mm aluminum spacer. Followed by precision shims and our assembled wheels and our 9mm aluminum spacer, followed by our wheel. We're going to add our precision shims, followed by our 6mm aluminum spacer. All right, now we have our dual wheel configuration in place. I'm going to go ahead and add our back plate to this configuration. All right, make sure your eccentric spacers are in place. Very nice. Now we're going to go ahead and thread in our black nylon hex nuts. All right, now that you have those in place, we're going to go ahead and tilt this to the side. We're going to grab our M5 ball driver and our spanner wrench and tighten these bolts down. All right, perfect. So we've got all our screws fastened down. We're going to go ahead and adjust our eccentric spacers here on the bottom. As you can see, I have one that's facing the right way, but we want all of them facing the right way. All right, perfect. As you can see here, all my marked eccentrics are facing me away from our fixed wheels. Now look at that assembly, guys. That looks great. It's really coming together. And one additional thing I will say is make sure that your timing pulley is aligned with your wheels here. This is where the belt will run. So we don't want the belt running back and forth. So in order to keep it straight, we want to align it with these wheels here. Go ahead and do that, guys. And we are going to move on to the next step. All right, guys, moving forward to our next step here, we are going to be mounting our Z plate to our X plates here. So we have two of our assemblies that are going to be combined. We are going to need our two assemblies, eight of our 20 millimeter screws, eight of our nylon hex nuts, our spanner wrench and M5 ball driver here. So we're going to notice on our assembly here, our X assembly, that on the back end we have eight holes here that are going to align with our Z plate here and our matting process. So just want to get a feel for it real quick, make sure that they're aligned, looks great. So from the back end we're going to go ahead and insert our screws kind of hold the sandwich here together like so start to feed these screws through these holes all right so grab one of your black nylon hex nuts here and begin to thread it in to one of your screws
All right, now that we have those in place, I'm gonna make sure that the system is square while we tighten it down. On the opposite side, the back end of our X plate here, we have access holes to where you can tighten these bolts down. Go ahead and take your ball driver, feed it through, and uh, on the other side, we're gonna use our spanner wrench to tighten this placement down. All right, now that we have this assembly together here, all the screws are tightened. You can see this is looking really great. Super excited to see this machine, and I can't wait to uh, finish this up, guys. Good job. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and move on to our next step. All right, guys, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be using our X assembly to establish our end mounts on the end of our Z axis here. In this step, we're gonna need our 250 millimeter C beam. We're gonna need our X assembly. We are also gonna need our two Z end mounts and eight of our 15 millimeter screws. All right, so we're gonna start by grabbing our 250 millimeter C-beam here and taking our X assembly and we're going to let the wheels slide onto the track here. Now there shouldn't be any preload on the wheels. If there is, we can always adjust our Centrix to allow this to slide on smoothly. So let's go ahead and adjust our Centrix a little bit. This was a little tight. All right, so that slid right on, so that's perfect. So from here, we're just gonna let this lay. These Z end mounts are going to be attached next. So we're gonna grab our 15 millimeter screws, making sure that the recessed holes are facing outward. We're just gonna thread those into place. All right, now that we got those threaded into place, we're just gonna go ahead and tighten them down, making sure that the C-beam end mount is flush against the C-beam. All right, perfect. Those are in place. So we're going to move on to the opposite side. All right, perfect. So as you can see here, our Z end mounts are attached and in place. It's looking great. Now we're gonna go ahead and adjust our Centrix on this 250 millimeter C-beam. So go to the Centrix side of your X assembly here and as you can see, we have our marked ends of our Centrix facing us. So now we're gonna adjust those to the right until we have our proper preload that we want on our Z assembly here. Now every single one of your Centrix is gonna be adjusted the same way. And the reason we do that is to make sure that there isn't an uneven side. Oh yeah, it's rolling smooth, all wheels are touching the track, it's not too tight, but you definitely don't want to over tighten these wheels. Over time, the pressure will cause uh, indentions into the actual wheel, so you want them just touching the track with a little resistance. This is perfect, guys. So we've got our Z-axis here already established, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Alright, guys. So on this next step here, we are going to be assembling our lead screw for our Z-axis. We are going to need our 250 millimeter lead screw. We are going to need two of our lock collars, two of our flange bearings, two of our eight millimeter shims, our flexible coupling, four of our 60 millimeter screws, four of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, our ball driver set, our spanner wrench, NEMA 23 motor, and let's go ahead and get started here guys. So starting off, we're going to go ahead and stand this up proper so we can see where we need to mount our motor, which is on top here. The leads and the wires should be facing outward as is this motor. So let's go ahead and lay it back down. We're going to go ahead and feed our lead screw through, adding our additional parts, starting with our flange bearing here, our eight millimeter shim, our lock collar and we're just going to go ahead and feed this through into our anti-backlash all right as you do i'm just going to turn it to the right we're going to make sure that our parts here stay to the right towards our end mount we're going to go ahead and add our eight millimeter lock collar our eight millimeter shim our flange bearing and we're going to go ahead and continue to feed that through making sure that our parts on the opposite side are to the right so with this assembly we want to make sure that the lead screw on the bottom end comes all the way forward before we lock it into place so you want it to be flush against the end mount as you can see it's pretty flush right now so we're going to go ahead and adjust our flange bearing place it into the end mount it should lock into place 
Make sure your 8mm lock collar is tight against your 8mm shim and flange bearing before you tighten it. I'm going to go ahead and do the same process on the opposite side here. Alright, now that that's in place, we're going to start with mounting our motor, which is going to be for on the top our, portion our motor here. Motor Alright, so now we're going to mount our motor to the top portion here, where our additional length of lead screw is sticking out. This will be added to our flexible coupling. Alright, so we're going to take our flexible coupling here. We're going to notice that we have two different size holes here. One's for the quarter inch bore attached to our motor. The opposite end is going to attach to our lead screw. You can see it's much larger. So we're going to go ahead and attach that to our lead screw here. Make sure it's fed all the way through, and we're going to tighten that down with our set screw on the opposite end here. Alright, so now for mounting our motor, I'm going to start off with attaching our shaft to the flexible coupling, making sure that the flat side is facing up and is attached to our set screw here. You can see the flat portion is facing our set screw, so we're going to go ahead and tighten that down. Alright, perfect. On the opposite end here, we're going to tighten that down as well. All right, very nice. So now that that's in place, all right, so we're going to start off by putting our 60 millimeter screw through one of our motor mount holes here with the 40 millimeter aluminum spacer and the additional 9 millimeter aluminum spacer. Go ahead and grab your ball driver and secure that into place. Now don't over tighten it because we need to get the rest of our screws into place and we're going to do the same thing on the additional three holes here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and tighten all these down. All right, perfect. So check that out. Got our Z-axis established and ready. Lead screw is in place. All the additional parts. It's looking great, guys. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put that to the side and move on to our next step. All right, so moving forward to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our X gantry. So we're going to start off with our Y axis assembly here. And we're going to mount it to our C beam and 20 by 40 rail. So we're going to need our assembly, our 1000 millimeter C beam, our 1000 millimeter 20 by 40. And we're also going to need six of our 15 millimeter screws, M5 ball driver. So let's go ahead and get started here, guys. Simply picking up the plate here, grabbing one of our 15 millimeter screws. I just kind of like to hang it off to the edge and get it threaded in to one of the holes of the C-beam to kind of hold it into place. Alright, so don't tighten it all the way because we are going to need to make sure that this is square. So we're going to go ahead and set it up on our table. Now that we have the C-beam attached, it's a little bit easier to adjust. Alright, so grab your additional 15 millimeter screws here, guys, and go ahead and thread them in. All right, perfect. So we don't have the screws completely tight. So we're going to readjust that once we go to the next step and add our additional plate on the other side. So we're going to grab our 20 by 40 rail here and place it into these bottom two holes here underneath our square cutout into our plate. There's two holes underneath. That's where we're going to thread these 15 millimeter screws into place. Alright, so now we have our right plate attached to our extrusion here. It's really starting to come together, guys. Alright, guys, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, guys, moving forward to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our Y-axis left plate to our X-axis here with our X-assembly and our Z-axis. We are going to place onto the rail first before we assemble our Y-axis left plate. We are going to need our two assemblies here, our additional X-axis assembly here, our six 15 millimeter screws, our M5 ball driver, and our spanner wrench. So let's go ahead and get started here, guys. We're going to grab our, our ZX map configuration and slide it into place here. You want to make sure that the back end of this configuration is facing the 20 by 40 rail here. So this should slide on a place here, just like so. I'm gonna go ahead and run that to the middle of this system here, like so. And we are going to grab our Y axis left plate here and go ahead and get a couple screws threaded into our C beam to keep it into place.
All right, so we've got one of our screws in place here. So it's going to try to tilt back. Go ahead and slowly let it tilt back here. All right, now we're going to go ahead and take our additional 15 millimeter screws and fasten them into place. All right, now we're going to fasten our 20 by 40 into place here. All right. So now we have both plates attached and secure. If you haven't tightened your left plate, go ahead and do so. All right, so I'm going to shift this over just a little bit. Check that out, guys. we got our X-axis established, our Z riding along the X-axis here. It's looking great, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so on this next step, guys, we're going to adjust the centric spacers on our X-axis here. So we need to make sure that they're tightened and uh, we have plenty of preload on our X-axis. So go ahead and take your spanner wrench here and uh, go ahead and make your adjustments. All right, very nice. So now that we have our Centrix adjusted here, we have some resistance on our access here in our carriage system, and that feels really smooth. It's exactly what we want, guys. All right, so let's move on to the next step. All right, guys, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be using our black angle corner connectors, and we are going to be mounting the black angle corner connectors to our Y axis plates for extra rigidity and extra security for our center X beam here. So we're going to do that on both sides. We're going to need four of our black angle corner connectors. We're going to need four of our drop in T nuts, four of our black nylon hex nuts, four of our eight millimeter screws, and four of our 12 millimeter screws here and of course our M5 ball driver and our spanner wrench. Alright so let's go ahead and grab one of our black angle corner connectors here. I'm going to go ahead and start assembling one of our drop in T-nuts to our 8mm screw. It's just a little bit easier to get it within the track and then mount it where you want it. So we're going to go ahead and twist that into place. Go ahead and take your ball driver here and you'll see what I mean when you can adjust it by turning your ball driver. You can align it to the proper placement and just fasten it down. Alright, so we got our one black angle corner connector in place. So on the opposite side, we have a hole here that the 12 millimeter screw is going to go through and we're going to lock it into place with our hex nut on the other side. So that's one of our black angle corner connectors that are placed properly. We're going to go ahead and do the bottom portion next. All right, so that's two on this side. We're also going to do two on the opposite side here. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, perfect. So we've got two black angle corner connectors on both sides helping to support this system. You can tell it's super sturdy right now. That's what we want. So this is looking really good, guys. Super excited. This machine's coming together. Going to be done in no time. So let's move on to the next step, guys. Okay, moving on to the next step here, guys. So on the step, we're going to be looping our belt through our Y axis. So as you can see here, I have 10 feet in total, five foot per side of our GT3 timing belt. I've got one that has already been pre-looped to give you a demonstration of how it looks from within the Y axis here. It loops around the timing pulley under the two idler wheels. So I'm going to show you how I did this. So you're going to have one on both axis. We're going to go ahead and start with our left side here. We're going to feed it through our left axis here. And you want plenty of slack on both sides. So go ahead and feed it through a little bit. And then you're going to pinch towards the middle underneath one wheel. 
and then your opposite wheel, you're going to do the same thing. Now be patient, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. It's a bit of an awkward position. So you can use tools, M5 ball drivers. I have relatively small hands so I can kind of fit into this axis here and uh, pinch it into place. I've got it around my pulley and underneath both idlers. So we're going to leave that just like so. And on our next step we're going to be feeding our 1500 C beam into both sides. So from there you will see how the idler pulley wheels will pinch the belt within the track so it'll be stuck into place. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step here guys. Alright, so moving on to the next step here guys, we are going to run our two pieces of 1500 millimeter C-beam into both Y axes. Each C-beam should be facing the opposite side, so your center C should be facing to the outside, same on this side. That way we can have the belt run through the track, the pulley fits within the track as well. So let's go ahead and get started here guys. So starting with the left side here, I'm going to place my belt inside the C-beam and we're going to slowly run the C-beam into our Y Y left axis. Now, while we're doing this, you want to make sure that your timing belt is pulled tight in order to keep the system from bunching. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a hold. I'm going to pull it tight while I run the C beam through. All right, so it's tight. Now let's go ahead and gently push the C beam through. So I felt the C-beam go in. We still have our belt within the track here. Just go ahead and feed it all the way through. And we're going to repeat the process on the opposite side here, guys. So go ahead and uh, finish this up, and we will move on to the next step. Okay, guys, so we're moving on to the next step here. As you can see, the machine is coming along nicely. It's looking great. So now we're going to put our spoiler board configuration together. All right, so we'll need two of our 20 by 40 rails at 995, and we'll also need two of our 20 by 40 rails at 914. So we're also gonna need additional parts here. We're gonna need 82 of our M5 T-nuts, four of our drop-in T-nuts. We're also gonna need 24 of our 12 millimeter screws. We're also gonna need eight of our eight millimeter screws and 16 of our 15 millimeter screws here. We're also gonna need four of of our end plates for our configuration and four of our black angle corner connectors. All right guys, so we're gonna start off with our M5 T-nuts here. We're gonna be placing a total of 12 M5 T-nuts on one side of our 20 by 40 rail at 914 millimeters. So we're gonna go ahead and start off by putting our M5 T-nuts into our right section here of our 20 by 40 rail. So as you can see here, the M5 T-nut should have a lip underneath. This will be facing the rail, so make sure that this is facing the outside of the rail. All right, so basically there's gonna be six on top, on the top slot here, and then six on the bottom. So let's go ahead and slide six of these M5 T-nuts in. All right, so six on top. We're gonna go ahead and put another six on the bottom here. So we've got 12 of our uh, M5 T-nuts in place on the right side of this 20 by 40 rail. All right, so we're gonna put four on the opposite side here. So it's gonna be two on top, two on the bottom. All right, and just slide those down and leave them in like so. So we're gonna put this rail to the side and we're gonna do the same process to our second 914 millimeter rail. All right, so on the right side, once again, we're gonna put 12 of our M5 T-nuts. Go ahead and do six on top, six on the bottom. All right, now we have our 12 in place here. We're gonna go ahead and put four on our opposite side. Two on top, two on bottom. All right, now that we've finished that, we're going to go ahead and put this one to the side, and we are going to move on to our 995 millimeter 20 by 40 rail, which is going to be for the bottom portion underneath our 1500 C beam. All right, so on the 995 20 by 40 rail, we are going to put a total of six of our M5 T nuts on one side and only our top upper slot here. So go ahead and put six of those in. All right, now that we got our six in our top section of the 20 by 40 rail, we're gonna go to the other side, which is gonna need eight of our uh, M5 T-nuts. So we're gonna do four on top, four on the bottom here.
All right, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and put this one to the side. All right, so we're doing the same thing on this 20 by 40 rail as well. So we're going to go ahead and grab our M5T nuts. And on the right side, on the top slot only, we are going to put six of our M5T nuts. All right, so now we're going to switch to the left side and we're going to put a total of eight, four on top, four on bottom. All right, perfect. So now that we have these in place, we're going to go ahead and start on our front side of the machine first. Let's go ahead and slide some of these rails forward, give us a little working space. I'm going to go ahead and grab this 20 by 4995 and with the eight M5 T-nuts facing me away from the machine, as you can see here, we want those facing away from the machine because that's going to be part of our mounting configuration for our end plate. So make sure that you have the side facing you with a total of eight of our M5 T-nuts. Let's go ahead and prop this up onto our 1500 C-beam. Just like so. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and shift some of these T-nuts over. We're gonna need four per side in total. So two on top, two on bottom on each side. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab one of our end plates here. As you can see, you want the open built insignia facing outward. Make sure that it lines up with the C on our C-beam. And we're gonna start to thread that in first before we mount into our 20 by 40 rail underneath. So let's go ahead and grab our 15 millimeter screws here and thread one in. All right, now you want to make sure that this plate is square onto your C-beam. So make sure that it's a flush mount before you tighten down your screws. You can always go back and loosen and retighten if necessary. Now go ahead and do your additional three. All right, so now that we have that fastened and in place on our C-beam, we are going to move on to the bottom portion of our 20 by 40 rail here. So we're gonna slide this over a little bit and move our M5 T-nuts into their appropriate places. Go ahead and slide it back over here. You wanna make sure that your 20 by 40 rail is flush against your C-beam. So you see how it's sticking out a little bit? We're gonna go ahead and shift that back a little bit. All right, now we're gonna grab our 12 millimeter screws and fasten these down. Alright, make sure that that's nice and tight, and that looks great. It's got one of our end plates on so far. It's flush against our C-beam. It's looking good. So we're going to move on to our left side here. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and move these T-nuts down. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab our opposite end plate here. And same thing, we're gonna go ahead and feed it into our C-beam. If you have your belt in the way, you can just move it to the side. Grab one of your 15 millimeter screws. Go ahead and start to thread it in. Once again, you wanna make sure that this end plate is flush with your C-beam. So before you tighten down your screws, make sure that it is flush. All right, those are on there perfect. It's nice and tight, feels square. So we're gonna go ahead and mount our 20 by 40 to the end plate as well. Let's go ahead and shift those T-nuts into place and we're gonna use our 12 millimeter screws and go ahead and secure this into place. All right, perfect. So now we've got our end plates mounted properly. They're looking great. We're gonna move on to our shorter rail, the 914 millimeter. Now on this one, we want the side with the four facing us, and then the additional T-nuts on the other side are gonna be facing inward towards the machine for our additional mounting process. So we're gonna go ahead and secure this into place. All right, it's looking good. We're gonna go ahead and shift some of these T-nuts over. All right, now that we have them in place, we're gonna go ahead and add two additional T-nuts for our black angle corner connectors. They're gonna be on top of the 20 by 40 rail here. So on this top slot here, go ahead and slide in two of your additional T-nuts. All right, let's go ahead and set that back down into our mounting configuration. All right, so we're gonna grab our 12 millimeter screws and go ahead and begin to mount this to our end plate.
All right, got those nice and tight. We're gonna go ahead and shift this top T-nut over. Grab two more of your 12 millimeter screws. We're gonna go ahead and secure this into place. All right, very nice. We've got those in place. We're gonna go ahead and put our M5 T-nuts onto our side corners here for our additional mounting process, which is with our black angle corner connectors. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab our black angle corner connectors here. I'm gonna go ahead and partially assemble the side of the corner bracket here so we can insert it into our C-beam track. So we're gonna grab one of our eight millimeter screws, one of our drop-in T-nuts. Now we're going to go ahead and slide it into the track here. Make sure it mounts flush to our end plate. Go ahead and secure that into place. That's just beautiful. It fits perfect. It's flush mount. Looks good. I'm liking that. So let's go ahead and get our additional 8mm screw. Drop it into place here. Fasten that down. Beautiful. Alright, so let's work on our next side here. Perfect. That's looking really good, guys. Go ahead and step back here. As you can see, that configuration is super solid. We've got two 20 by 40 rails pushed up. So essentially, it's a 20 by 80 rail. It's looking great, guys. So this same same process we're going to repeat on our opposite side of the machine. So once again, remember to follow this step in order to mirror your process, guys. So go ahead and finish up the second side of the machine, and we're going to move on to our next step. Okay guys, moving forward to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our base beams for our spoiler board configuration. We are going to need 48 of our M5 T-nuts, 12 of our triple brackets, 36 of our 8mm screws, our ball driver, and in addition we are going to need 3 of our 14 60mm 20x80 V-slot rails. Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and place our 20 by 80 rail here inside the machine. We are going to start off with inserting three of our M5 T-nuts in our top slot of the 20 by 80 rail. And the purpose of this is for our spoiler board mounting configuration. We are going to use single L brackets in an upward position to mount from the bottom of the spoiler board. So go ahead and insert three of your M5 T-nuts in this top rail here. All right, now that we have three on the top left side of our 20 by 80 rail, we're gonna go ahead and insert three more of our T-nuts. And we are gonna mount our triple L bracket to our 20 by 80 rail. So go ahead and grab one of your triple L brackets here. As you can see, the whole spacing differs. We have one that's further away from our corner, our center corner here, and one that's closer. We're gonna use the closest end and attach it to our 20 by 80. The other end will attach to our 20 by 40 mounting spoiler board configuration. So go ahead and grab one of your eight millimeter screws here. And make sure it's flush against your 20 by 80 and just fasten that top one in place. All right, and follow suit with the next two. All right, perfect. So now we're gonna go ahead and flip our 20 by 80 rail here, and we're gonna do the same thing. We don't have to put any uh, T-nuts in this right side, because it's only gonna be on the left side that we're gonna be mounting underneath our spoiler board. So go ahead and insert three T-nuts for our triple L bracket. And make sure that your T-nuts are on the top portion of the 20 by 80 rail. We do have one additional track here that's not being used. So make sure that they're on the top three matching our opposite side. All right, so we're going to do this on the opposite side of the 20 by 80. So we're going to go ahead and move that. So once again, we want to make sure to keep everything accurate. So the brackets are placed on these three slots here. So we're going to make sure to mirror that. Go ahead and place in your M5 T-nuts. And we will fix our brackets on both sides of the 20 by 80 rail here. Alright, now go ahead and flip the rail, and once again, make sure to keep it on the top three slots here. Alright, perfect. So now we can go ahead and put this rail to the side. Now based on the way this rail will plant onto our machine, we need to make sure that we do the opposite for the left side. So let's go ahead and put this to the side. Alright, and grab our center beam. 
All right, now for the center beam, we are going to be adding three T-nuts on both sides of the top slot here. And the reason for doing that is because we're gonna have, we're gonna have self-tapping screws going into our spoiler board from underneath, and it's gonna be on both sides of this 20 by 80. So go ahead and insert three on each side for three L brackets on the opposite end as well. All right, now go ahead and slide these T-nuts down. All right, that way we have room to put additional T-nuts in for our triple L brackets. So three more on these top three slots. And once again, pay attention to the hole spacing. We want the one that's closest to the corner here on the 20 by 80 rail. So let's go ahead and lock these into place with our 8 millimeter screws. All right, we're going to go ahead and flip it to the side. So let's go ahead and fasten that triple L bracket down. All right, so go ahead and rotate your 20 by 80 rail. All right, so make sure that you're paying attention to where we place the last triple brackets. We want to mirror that onto this side. So three more of our M5 T-nuts on the top three sections here. Triple L bracket, and let's go ahead and mount that into place. Alright, perfect. So now we have this one about finished. We're going to put the last touches on this side for our triple L bracket and put it to the side and move on to our next 20 by 80 piece of V slot. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and put this one to the side. Alright, grab your next 20 by 80 piece of V-slot. Alright, so now for this section here, we are actually going to be putting our M5 T-nuts, three of them, on our top right slot. So underneath here, just going to go ahead and place three of our M5 T-nuts. And once again, this is for our mounting configuration of our spoiler board. It's super sturdy, aesthetically pleasing. It's a really cool design going from underneath to mount the spoiler board versus recessing holes on top. So you'll see it definitely makes a difference. I'm going to go ahead and place three more of our M5 T-nuts to mount our bracket. All right, so go ahead and secure this into place. All right, go ahead and flip it over. Same process. All right, so go ahead and flip this 20 by 80 to the other side. All right, once again, you want to make sure to mirror this to the opposite side. So it's going to be these three tracks here that we're going to put M5 T-nuts in. All right, go ahead and mount the triple L bracket. All right, go ahead and flip it over and repeat the process for this back side. All right, and that is our assembly for these uh, three 20 by 80 pieces of V-slot that will be part of our base assembly. So go ahead and put these to the side, guys, and we'll move on to our next step. Okay, moving on to the next step, we are going to be mounting our base assemblies to our base configuration here. So as you can see, we already got our T-nuts in place from previous steps. So we are going to be using those in order to mount our triple L brackets to our base assembly. So in this step, we're going to need 36 of our M5 eight millimeter screws, permanent marker, our M5 ball driver, and a measuring tape. So we're gonna go ahead and measure from the 20 by 80 all the way to the end here into our quadrant. And we need 219 millimeters here. So go ahead and find that on your measuring tape and go ahead and put a mark on that area. And that will be our measurement for our triple L bracket mounting. All right, so you can just put a little mark on there and that'll be sufficient. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on our opposite side. All right, guys. So for the center beam, we are actually going to split the difference. So after we get our other two mounted, we will go ahead and do that calculation. So for now, let's go ahead and start with our left beam. 
And the left beam should have T-nuts on its left top side slot for our spoiler board mounting configuration. So go ahead and slide this into place here. All right, so once you slide your rail in place, you're gonna go ahead and move your T-nuts to their proper places, starting with a mark that we made at 219 millimeters. So as you can see, I've already got mine in place here on each side. It's kind of a good idea to go ahead and adjust these before you put the rail in, a little bit easier to uh, manipulate. So we're gonna go ahead and start mounting this to our rail here with our eight millimeter screws. Alright, perfect. So we have this one mounted into place. So we're going to go ahead and work on our center beam. Go ahead and move your supplies out of the way here. Now remember with uh, your center beam, you should have the T-nuts on both sides on the top track here. Alright, so now that we have our center beam in place here, we're going to go ahead and do a quick measurement from one dot to the next of our 219 millimeters. Alright, so that placement puts us at 54 millimeters. So we're going to go ahead and take the difference of that. So we're going to take our measurement at 27. All right, just make sure you center that into the rail here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and adjust our T-nuts to go ahead and mount these triple brackets in place here. And we're going to go ahead and mount this down, guys. All right, perfect. So we have this one in place. Now let's go ahead and grab our last 20 by 80 rail and slide it into place here. Make sure that you use your point of reference that we've made at 219 millimeters. Now let's go ahead and manipulate our T-nuts into place here. All right, now that we have our T-nuts in place, we're going to go ahead and grab an 8 millimeter screw and start fastening this triple L bracket into place. Now we have all three of our base support beams in place for our spoiler board configuration. It's looking great guys. We're going to repeat the same process on the other side of the machine. So go ahead and get started on that and we'll move on to our next step. Alright, so after we finished our base assembly, as you can see here we have all four ends attached to our spoiler board configuration. So once we have that finished, we're going to move on to our next step here, which is going to be our actual mounting process for our spoiler board. So we're going to need 20 of our single L brackets here. We're going to need 8 of our drop-in T-nuts, 20 of our 8mm screws, and 20 of our self-tapping screws. In addition to that, we're going to need our M5 ball driver, permanent marker, and measuring tape. We're going to go ahead and start with our measuring tape here, and we're going to measure a foot out from the inside of our rail across our 20 by 80 beam here. As you can see, I've already got it pre-marked, so go ahead and mark those on each side, and we're going to go ahead and place our single L bracket. So starting off, I'm going to go ahead and take one of our single L brackets, one of our drop-in T-nuts, and an 8 millimeter screw. Noticing that our spacing is different on each side of our single L bracket, we are going to take the spacing that is closest to the corner and attach it to our rail. So go ahead and thread in your 8 millimeter screw with your drop in T nut. So now that we have that in place, we're going to go ahead and come over here to the front of our machine and we're going to find the center point between our 20 by 80 rail and our C-beam. So you can either uh, measure that out or you can uh, eyeball the center here for our mounting configuration. So make sure that it's in the top rail here for our 20 by 40 and we're going to go ahead and place that. All right, make sure that's nice and tight. It's flush against our 20 by 40 rail here. That's going to be for a good mount. So let's go ahead and double check that with our tape. I want to show you guys both ways. So from the C-beam to our 20 by 80 rail, we're about 8 inches. So we're pretty much right at 4, which is perfect. So we're going to continue this process along the front side of the machine, and then we'll move on towards the center of our machine. So let's go ahead and do that, guys. So as you can see here, we have four on the side placed on our, our base frame for the 20 by 40s that are attached to our end plates. That looks really great, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to our, our center beams that run across here in this quadrant. So as you can see, we have the one marked at one foot. So we're going to bring our T-nuts from the back side of the machine forward so we can mount this. 
So you should have three T-nuts from our previous steps that we've placed in these rails, preemptive, so we could do this mounting process. So go ahead and bring one down, like so, and go ahead and scoot the other two down. We're going to get to those a little bit later. And take your single L bracket with an 8mm screw, and remember the whole spacing that's closest to our corner is what we're going to be mounting to our rail. So go ahead and use the 8mm screw and fasten that into place. Alright, so we're going to follow that same process down the other two rails. And the center rail we are going to add two. So at one foot out, we are going to put a single L bracket on each side. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started, guys. Alright, very nice. Okay, so we're going to move on to our left side of the center beam here. All right, that's really starting to shape up. We got one more rail here to do, just on the left side. So this side here, we're gonna just move the T-nut down in line to our one foot mark. We're gonna grab our single L bracket, eight millimeter screw, and let's go ahead and lock it into place. So now we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side of our machine. So let's go ahead and get started with that, guys, and we'll move on to our next step. All right, now that we have our brackets on both sides in place, we still need to do our center brackets for our spoiler board mounting configuration. So we're going to take a measurement from each one of our single L brackets on both sides. Let's go ahead and grab your measuring tape and take a measurement from the inside of the bracket to the opposite end. So we're about at 32, so 16 will be our midpoint. Let's go ahead and adjust your T-nut according to uh, that measurement. So you can make a, a little mark here, point of reference. I've already got mine in place. So we're gonna go ahead and mount the rest of our single L brackets. All right, so that's one in place. So let's follow suit with our additional three. So remember two in the middle. It's not gonna differ for, from the rest of our single L brackets. The middle is gonna stay the same. So we're gonna have one on each side. And on our right rail, just one on the right side of the rail. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. Alright, so moving on to the other side of our center rail here. We're going to go ahead and adjust our M5 T-nut into place. Grab one of our single L brackets and go ahead and secure that. Alright, so now that that's secured and in place, we're going to move on to our last center bracket here, guys. And let's go ahead and mount that single L bracket here. So all of our single L brackets are in place. It's looking great, guys. Look at this machine. It's huge. This is going to be awesome, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, guys. So our next step here, we are going to be adjusting our eccentrics on both of our Y axes. Now, in order to do that, I've kind of hung my machine off the table slightly. That way I can have access to the bottom half of our plate. You're just going to need your open build spanner wrench. We'll go ahead and make the adjustment. Make sure that you're turning your eccentrics in the same direction. So we're going to be turning ours to the right. Make sure to put the proper preload on our wheels here. You don't want to over tighten it. You want a little resistance, just like so. Make sure that it's riding on the rail. And then continue with our others. So now that we have our centrics adjusted, we're going to go ahead and do that same process for our opposite plate on the y-axis. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys, and we'll move on to our next step. All right, moving forward here to the next step, we are going to be placing our end caps onto our end rails here, our 20 by 40 rails. So in this step, we're going to need four of our end cap plates, and we're also going to need eight of our self-tapping screws and our power drill. So... Let's go ahead and place one of our end caps with our self-tapping screws on our end of our 20 by 40 rail here. And what I'll do is adjust my machine off the end of the table so we can have a little room to work when placing these screws. All right, so now that we have one in place, we're going to go ahead and do our other three. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All 
All right, very nice. So we have both of our plates on this side in place. So let's go ahead and continue on to the next side, guys. And we will move on to our next step. All right, moving forward here, guys, to our next step. As you can see, our machine is coming along nicely. We are just putting on our finishing touches here with our belt. In addition to that, we will be mounting our spoiler board. But on this step, we're going to focus on our belt for our X-axis. As you can see here, we have uh, five foot of our belt. Also going to need four of our eight millimeter screws, two of our drop-in T-nuts, and two of our belt tensioners. All right, guys, so we're going to grab our GT3 belt and feed it through our track. So pay attention, there's two slots here. We're gonna use our left slot underneath our timing pulley. So we're gonna go ahead and feed that all the way through until you reach the end. You might have some additional slack, that's fine. Now we're gonna grab the belt from each end and pinch underneath to create a loop for our GT3 22 timing pulley. Go ahead and slide that bad boy on there. As you can see, we are attached and underneath the wheels. So now we can move on to adjusting our belt clamps. Okay, moving forward, go ahead and notice that your belt tensioner has a unique set of hole spacing here. You have two of your rectangular style hole spacing, which the belt will run underneath and over. You also have two of your pocket holes here that will be attached to your end plate, which will be your Y-axis end plate. So grabbing your GT3 timing belt, we're gonna go ahead and wire it through and pinch that through the opposite side. You can always pull it loose or tighter depending on how far it went through. So as you can see here, I have a little bit hanging off the excess here. That's about standard for what we need to uh, get this in place. So as you can see, the belt tensioner right now is hanging off the plate and I still have plenty of slack on the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this through a little bit further and give you an account for how long the additional belt size is. All right, so let's just continue to pull that through. Okay, guys, so we're gonna continue to uh, measure out our additional length here that's underneath our belt tensioner. So we're at about an inch and a half, which is approximately 40 millimeters. So from here, we're gonna grab one of our drop-in T-nuts and eight millimeter screws. Go ahead and thread your drop-in T-nut into place here. Now we're going to take our ball driver here with our additional 8 millimeter screw and mount it into our Y axis plate. So first in order to give us room, we'll go ahead and fasten down our bottom drop in tina and 8 millimeter screw into place. Now let's go ahead and mount that into our plate. As you can see here, the 8mm screw fits flush to our plate for a nice, aesthetically pleasing look here on our Y-axis plate. This is looking fantastic, guys. Super excited. We're going to go ahead and move to our opposite side and adjust that belt tensioner. So let's go ahead and rotate our machine around. Alright, now that we have our machine rotated around, we're going to go through our same process here. Grab one of our belt tensioners, and once again we are going to feed the belt through the bottom portion here, and back through the top. Now with this belt, we want quite a bit of tension in order to keep our gantry system moving smoothly. We don't want any backlash in the system, so I'm going to give you an accurate measurement on our length of belt here that's underneath our belt tensioner clamp. Alright, as you can see here, we have a decent sized amount of belt left over. So once we get to uh, tightening this down, there will be plenty of tension. So we're going to go ahead and leave this here for now and grab our measuring tape and measure this bottom slack piece here. Get an idea of how much tension we are putting on this belt. It's approximately two and a half inches, which is about 65 millimeters long. So that's what we need, guys. So if you haven't already pulled that much through, go ahead and do so. All right, now we're going to go ahead and grab our 8 millimeter screw, one of our drop-in T-nuts, and go ahead and assemble this clamp into place. So feeding the 8 millimeter screw through, I'm going to go ahead and thread this uh, drop-in T-nut onto the 8 millimeter screw. I'm going to go ahead and place this in the track here. 
Go ahead and grab your ball driver. I'm going to pull this back as far as you can and adjust your 8mm screw to where you can access your plate through your belt tensioner. So I've got that placed in there. It's not tight, but it's out of the way. So let's go ahead and grab our other 8mm screw, place it through your belt tensioner, and begin to push towards your plate. If you need to loosen your drop antenna 8mm screw, go ahead and do so. You want to be able to move this belt tensioner. All right, now that I'm into our threaded hole on our plate, I'm going to start tightening this down. Now as you can see here, my belt is actually up above the slot. It's not completely touching the bottom of the slot. So what we want is exactly this. We want the belt to be tensioned enough to where it's up above the slot and it's got tension on there. So as we move our gantry system, there is no backlash. As you can see here, man that runs smooth. That's what I'm talking about. Alright guys, now that we got this in place, Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving forward, guys, we are going to be assembling our belt tensioners into our Y axis. In this step, we are going to need our ball driver, our measuring tape, four of our belt tensioners. We're also going to need eight of our eight millimeter screws, four of our drop in T nut. All right, so to start this off, guys, we are going to try to get our belt as even as possible along this Y axis. So as you can see here, I have about a half an inch on one side, half an inch on another, so we are pretty much even. So to start off, we're gonna go ahead and loop our belt through our belt tensioner here. It's going to go up through one end here and down through the second so go ahead and feed this through crimp it and put it back through the second hole here now we're going to start off with about an inch and a half on this side so make sure you go ahead and get a little measurement here all right that's perfect so that we have an inch and a half on this side we will add additional length on the other side if need be for our tensioning process on the belt. So now that we have that in place, we're gonna go ahead and take an eight millimeter screw and one of our drop in T-nuts and go ahead and start to thread that through. Now that we have that threaded, we're gonna go ahead and place this in the track. Make sure that your folded belt is underneath and inside your slot here. And you can get your ball driver at an angle here to tighten down your eight millimeter screw. All right, and go ahead and grab your additional eight millimeter screw and attach it to the end plate. Now that we have that in place, we are gonna go ahead and move on to our left side here. All right, so same process here. This is where we're gonna add the additional tensioning. So we're gonna go ahead and run it through like we did the other and feed it back through and see how much of an adjustment we need to make. All right, so now that we have our adjusted tension here, let's go ahead and take a measurement of this. We're at approximately two and a quarter inches. So that's what you're gonna to wanna to put through your belt tensioner. So that's gonna be the slack hanging from the bottom portion of your tensioner here. So let's go ahead and take one of our eight millimeter screws, our drop in T-nuts and slide the eight millimeter screw and drop in T-nut into the slot here. So we're going to leave it like so, grab our additional 8mm screw and mount this to our end plate. Alright, so as you can see here, we do have tension on this belt so far. It's looking good. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our second portion of our Y axis. So let's go ahead and rotate our machine around so we can access it. And we will start assembling that side, guys. All right, perfect guys. So as you can see now, we have both of our belt tensioners assembled. Our belt is tightened and this machine is looking excellent guys. Great job so far. So let's go ahead and move our gantry system around a little bit. See how it flows. You want some resistance, but you also want that mobility. This thing's moving great. As you can see here, 
no problems whatsoever. That's what I'm talking about, guys. It's looking good. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving forward to the next step, guys. We are going to be straightening some of our L brackets if they are crooked here for our spoiler board mounting process. We are going to access the spoiler board from underneath and we will be drilling in with self-tapping screws. So you want to make sure that these are flush. So go ahead and check, check along our rails, making sure that our single L brackets look good. Ours do look great. So we're going to go ahead and turn our machine 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, perfect. So now that we have it turned in place, as you can see here, we have access to the bottom portion of the machine. So we can go ahead and drill in with our self-tapping screws to our spoiler board. Our measurements for our spoiler board are going to be at 59 inches by 34 inches, or also 1,500 millimeters by 860 millimeters. And also a spoiler board is going to be a three-quarter inch thick, also, or about 19 millimeters. So we're going to go ahead and place our spoiler board on top of our machine and begin our assembly process by fastening with our self-tapping screws and let's go ahead and move on to the next step guys okay guys moving on to the next step here we're going to be mounting our spoiler board to our spoiler board configuration underneath so we have our single L brackets in place we're gonna need 20 of our self-tapping screws our power drill and make sure that you have your spoiler board centered onto your machine it's very important you don't want anything cockeyed so this looks great let's go ahead and start the assembly process so underneath the machine machine here. We're going to start on our first single L bracket. Pressing down on top of the spoiler board with my hand, I'm going to mount the screw in place. Alright, so let's go on and assemble the rest of these three. Alright guys, so since we have all four of our single L brackets mounted to our spoiler board now, we're going to pull our machine out slightly to give us access to our additional three L brackets underneath the machine. So let's go ahead and drill in our self-tapping screws. Alright guys, so we're going to go ahead and move our machine 90 degrees. Alright guys, so we're going to pull it out to our first brace, which as you can see underneath the table, it's very sturdy. So we're going to leave it there while we drill in our self-tapping screws on our L-brackets. Alright guys, so now we have all of these L-brackets mounted to our spoiler board in this pocket here. So we're going to move on to our additional side. So once again, we'll move this machine 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and get that done. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and turn this machine 90 degrees. And let it hang off the edge just a little bit here. It's nice and sturdy, so let's go ahead and attach our additional self-tapping screws to our L-brackets here. Alright guys, so as you can see here, we have access to our additional L brackets underneath our spoiler board. So make sure you pull it out enough where you have access to those as well as our back L brackets here. So let's go ahead and get started and fasten these in place. Alright guys, now that we have these in place, we're going to go ahead and rotate our machine once again 90 degrees, give us access to our additional L bracket. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and rotate our machine once again 90 degrees. We're going to pull it out slightly to give us access to our additional L brackets. Alright, and then underneath we're going to go ahead and mount our additional self-tapping screws in place. Alright, so we have one more of our L brackets we need to mount to our spoiler board here. So let's go ahead and finish that up. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and rotate our machine once again to access our additional middle L brackets mount to our spoiler board. Alright guys, so we're going to go ahead and rotate our machine 90 degrees for the final time. Now on this last step here guys, we're going to need a spotter to pull this machine out. Since it's so large, not one person can mount the spoiler board from the middle. So we're going to call upon an additional spotter here to pull it out and hold it while I mount the three additional middle brackets. Let's go ahead and get started guys. All right, guys, we have them all in place. Now we'll have our spotter bring our table back, our machine back to the table. All right, guys, we've got our spoiler board in place here. It's looking exceptional. It's a beautiful machine, as you can see. We're going to put on our finishing touches with our router spindle mount, and we will be finished with the mechanical portion of this machine. Good job, guys. All right, guys, so we're going to be putting on our final touches to our mechanical portion of this machine, which is our router spindle mount here. Now, the first thing that we're going to need is, of course, our router spindle, four of our black angle 
corner connectors. We're going to need also eight of our eight millimeter screws, four of our drop-in T-nuts, our M5 ball driver, black permanent marker, and measuring tape. So first off, we're going to go ahead and get a measurement from the bottom of our Z plate, our end mount, and we're going to measure upward to about two inches. The reason being is we have a throat here that is approximately an inch and three quarters. So that's the maximum amount of material that you're going to be able to cut in this machine. So the cullet of the router can't be below our end mount here. So obviously routers are going to differ. We're going to set a standard for two inches above our end plate just for precautionary um, router adjustments. You can also adjust it if you do have a router that differs in measurement, but we're going to go ahead and start that off with the two inch measurement here. So go ahead and measure two inches up and uh, put a little spec on our Z axis. We're going to do that on both sides so we know where to mount our black angle corner connectors. All right, perfect. So go ahead and put your permanent marker away. Now we're going to go ahead and mount our black angle corner connectors to our router spindle first. This is for ease of assembly. Definitely helps out. That way we're not trying to get underneath the machine with an Allen key. So let's go ahead and put our eight millimeter screw in place. And we will do our additional three black angle corner connectors on the router spindle here. All right, now that we have our black angle quarter connectors in place, let's go ahead and partially assemble our eight millimeter screw to our drop in T nut. Just kind of thread that in place. That way it's easier to attach to our Z axis. All right, and we're gonna follow suit with our top black angle corner connectors. So let's go ahead and do that, guys. All right, perfect. So we got this threaded in place. Make sure the open build is facing upright. And we're going to place our bottom two eight millimeter screws with our drop-in T-nuts on our marks, our point of reference for two inches. So let's go ahead and mount that, guys. All right, perfect guys. Now check this out. We have the mechanical portion of this build complete. Great job, this machine looks great. Super excited, can't wait to start on the electronics portion because the sky's the limit with this machine, guys. Great job.